um, as we pick over the bones of what's going to happen on Saturday night. Joshua against Wallen, Wilder against Parker. And, uh, of course, Simon, like many here, you're going to be, I think, engrossed in this, aren't you, from yeah, start to absolutely. finish? You're going to sit there and watch a lot, listen to the lot, watch a lot. I'm going to go to Spurs Everton on Saturday afternoon and I'm going to come back and watch the rest of it. Yeah, ah, absolutely. All yeah. right. Good, good. We going with Rob Seagal, not going with Daniel before anyone starts. All right, not your friend Daniel. No, no. It's no. another friend. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Carl, one, one fight we, we haven't homed in on, and we will now, involves the loudmouth, Jarrell Miller, drug sheet as he's been called. He's up against Daniel Dubois. Can Dubois get back on track following his defeat to Usyk? I think he can. He's, he's young, he's still learning. He's, he's a good, good fighter, by the way. He can box, he can punch as well. He can punch quite hard. Um, so, if he's learn anything from the experience of being in there with one of the best in Usyk and, and Joe Joyce as well. Joe, Joe Joyce was was on form when he beat him and he just keeps coming like a steam train, what he called the juggernaut. juggernaut I mean, yeah. he just keeps coming forward and he's such a hard workout physically and he'll keep punching away, punching away and he just got to Joe, he got he got to Dubois and finished him off, got him out of there and um, the same happened, like a similar thing happened with Usyk. Of, I mean, I wanted to ask you, Carl, what did you make <clears throat> of Dubois' performance against Usyk? Because I couldn't make sense of... Um, Usyk being allowed to roll around on the floor and ultimately the referee calling him up after five, less than five minutes. Yet, he didn't jump on him. And I said it to John Charles, I can't understand. You know, I know he had to sit there for two or three minutes and wait and whilst Usyk made a four-act play out of it, right? But you would jump on him. <laughs> Inexperience, I think. Inexperience. Yeah, I think, yeah, because you're right, he should have he gone isn't that the trainer? Isn't that the trainer's job to make sure that he's ready to go? Yeah, exactly that as well. I mean... It's just, did his trainer tend to go through it? I think, you know what, sit back behind your jab. Because it was a moment, hurt, You've hurt him. But there was a moment there where Usyk looked. When the, when the referee brought back together, after, after they'd had his four and a half minutes yeah. rest, that's when Dubois could have really yeah. stuck it on him. And I'd have liked to have seen that. And what about the ninth round where, he, where people would make the accusation that he didn't bite down his gum shield? Yeah, he I think... He didn't... I mean, that's easy for me to say because I don't have to lace any gloves up. But you as a fighter, did you look at it and go... Oh, I need a bit more from you. Listen, I like to think that I would have carried on in, in that circumstance. Yeah. I've been in worse positions and stood up, looked at the referee and said, I'm good to go, let's do it. Yeah. I've trained for 12 weeks. I'm not going I'm not going out like this on yeah. one knee and shaking my head. I'm going out on my shield. And that's not to take anything away from, from Daniel Dubois, but he'd have learned from that. He's still young. Um, I had quite a big amateur career and I had a lot of sticky moments early on in my pro career as well. Even fighting for the British title, defended it three times. And then before I fought for the world title, when I got to the point where I was in trouble and I was being asked questions... I'd gone through quite a lot, even down sparring Howard Eastman when he so fought is it Hopkins. Exper- is it experience that gets you through that, or is it backbone? Or I, is think, it both? I think it's both, the experience right. in the professional ring, but then your upbringing from a kid and what you've been through and then the training camps. And I had Rob McCracken from day one, and he, he knew the sport inside out, he, he, amateur and professional, and he spent a lot of time in America title? as well. Do you think Dubois wins a world title? I think he's got the ability to win a, a world title, but obviously, like you know, with any sport, the mind's got to be right. Yeah. You've got to believe in yourself. So if, if what we're led to believe is true, uh, there has been a huddle in a, a, a locked room, and uh, a contract is, is either set up, drawn up, or is about to be signed, that involves AJ fighting Wilder. I don't subscribe to that view. You don't. So what what happens, though, Carl, if the script gets ripped up and that contract gets ripped up? Well, the first fam- Saturday night. What happens if Joshua were to lose? What happens if Wilder was to lose? I think if AJ loses, it's, I mean, I don't want to say it's the end of his career because he can still carry on boxing. But this would be such a bad defeat for him if he loses to Otto Wallin. It really would. It'd be real bad to, to his detriment and his mindset and the future of his career. Where does he go from there? He has to win this fight. Whether or not he steps straight in there with Deontay Wilder, I've got my reservations about that and the fact that he wants to become a three-time world, uh, three world champion, which is, is alluded to a couple of times. So maybe the Hergovic fight's on the cards, which we've talked about. So there's a, there's a, there's a bit of school doggery going off and a bit of playing the game. But I think he'll ultimately go where the big money is and the Wilder fight is the big money. Um, and Wilder's getting older he might just time him right but he's got to get over this hurdle on Saturday in, in Otto Wallen and this is no gimme no gimme I mean Simon I, I, I'd love to know now what we will know come Sunday because they cannot wait to get this thing signed if if Joshua beats Wallen and Wilder beats Parker the thing will be signed like that won't it says who says Eddie yeah, he, said that, he said that Conor Bemis fighting on February 3rd Right, and everyone went, no, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's, no, he's not. Why have no, they already given a... us a date? Why have we got a date for, for Wilder? Because it, sure. because it makes it sound more tangible, Wilder doesn't it? Yeah, it makes sure. it sound more feasible. It makes it sound more realistic. I'm with Carl. I think if you keep on talking about being a three-time world champion and then you want to come back to a table and have a negotiation with another world champion to fight for a, 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 a series of belts, which is what AJ may want to do with Fury if he beats Usyk, then you go there with a degree of equality and the opportunity 
is Hergovic. The, mm. he's, he's the mandatory. No. If, 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 if Joshua beats Wallen and Wilder beats Parker, they've got to make that damn fight no, on but Saturday But there's no world night. title belt on there. And Joshua wants three times world heavyweight champion. It's a and good the, point. And the way he gets it is he fights the mandatory, which Hergovic is going to get that, but it's going to be scattered. The moment Usyk or Fury win that fight, the IBF belt gets scattered. So the next out, the next cab off the rank is Hergovic. Who's the mandatory for Hergovic? It will be Joshua. Unless Deontay Wilder doesn't look good in this in this next fight mm. against Joseph Park. If he looks a bit limited, looks like he's got old overnight, because he is old. He's getting mm. old. I mean, I know he's a heavyweight, but still, he's, he's been inactive. So if he looks terrible, they might just think, you know yeah. what, it's big money. It's a great great way to to get a big name on my record before I go for the world title. But the world title one, the three-time world champion, which he keeps talking about, yeah. I think that's the favourite for AJ. Yeah, that's what I think. And then mm. after, after this weekend, all eyes will be in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia again in February because we will see Fury going against Usyk Carl. So we'll finish with this today. What do you read into this? John Fury's quotes around his son Tyson's camp. He says he's no longer, he's not as closely involved as he normally would be in the build-up to a fight. He says, yeah, I, I got it's, it's, ago. yeah, he says, it's the people around him who ain't up to much. His training's in decline and his camp's in a bigger decline. It's not a camp, it's a circus, well, it's says on, Father John. He's been on the inside, hasn't he, John? So he's seen the circus, as he puts it. So he's, he's entitled to his, his opinion and his comment, which we should probably take seriously because he's right in there. He's in the eye of the storm, if you like, watching everything, watching the people that are around him. And maybe a, maybe um, Fury's taking his foot off the gas a little bit. Maybe he's he's not doing what he should be doing training-wise. But... That read right, though. That, that camp are so tight. That family are so tight. Mm. For John Fury to break ranks. This isn't Chris Eubank Jr. and Chris Eubank Sr. No. This is, this is a Fury camp that you cannot break into. What's he doing? This, playing mind games? This is someone playing Smoke and Mirrors <laughs> of Usyk in his camp. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right, Simon. I think you, for the Furies who are like that, yeah. they stick together so much. They don't badmouth one another. And he's effectively suggesting that Tyson Fury is entertaining a circus, which is a criticism of his own son. They don't do that. And by the way, neither can anybody else criticise them. Only praise for the Furies. That's all that's allowed. Fair enough. Carl, great seeing you. Um, there is no talk of you coming back to fight anyone. I mean, I remember there was all this nonsensical talk some time ago. Some YouTubers were getting brave, weren't they? Then I think they yeah. realised the Cobra means business. And they yeah. don't fancy getting ironed out in front of how many people, wherever it is. No. So they didn't take it up, unfortunately, for me. Thank you for making the trip down here. I know this Pleasure. man was saying, get down here and join us in London. And you did, so close to Christmas, and we appreciate it. Listen, I've got a lot of respect for Simon Jordan and TalkSport. It's a great platform, so a pleasure to be here. Superb. Thank you so much oh listen to you lovely <laughs> someone's got to have someone they... uh, it's all live in talk sport on saturday the day of reckoning uh it's live and free on talk sport carl again thank you simon i shall see you tomorrow Indeed. uh as we head into of course the big weekend not just in saudi but christmas weekend coming up as well uh,